Okay, you're right. Welcome to your super giant long tutorial, which is your introduction to equations. Okay, hopefully some of you completed this stuff last year and hopefully for most of you, this is a revision. Okay, I'm going to revise over again with the language that I use, what equations are. And we're going to have a look at solving some equations that require us to use one step. Okay, one step to find the pronumeral and some that they require more than one step, two step equations. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, an equation is simply an expression. So things that involve maybe constants, maybe operators, maybe some pronumerals. Okay, we've been doing expressions in algebra. An equation isn't all that different. It's simply two, in ex two expressions and an equal sign. An expression on the left. An expression on the right. Um, that equal sign in the middle says everything on my left is equal to everything on my right. So an example of an equation that, that isn't algebraic, so it doesn't involve pronumerals, is saying 2 plus 3 equals 5. That's a, that's a simple equation. Okay? Everything on my left is equal to everything on my right. I could also write 5 equals 2 plus 3. Okay, it wouldn't be the end of the world, it's not a big deal. Okay, it still says the same thing. 5 equals 2 plus 3. 2 plus 3 equals 5. They're both the same thing. Okay, but we're going to look at ones that have pronumerals in them. The aim of equations that we are going to look at is to find what the unknown pronumeral is. Okay, that's the aim. How do we find this? Okay, so if the aim of equations is to find the pronumeral, how do we find it? Okay, well firstly we start to solve equations by moving things away from that pronumeral. We start with the things furthest away and then I work our way closer in. This is going to be really, really helpful when we start looking at two-step, in, in, when we look at which things to pick first. We start from the things furthest away on the side of the pronumeral, okay, and then we work our way closer in. Now, because there's that equal sign, because it says everything on the left is equal to everything on the right, to keep that equation true, we have to, if we do something to one side, so the left-hand side, we have to do the same thing to the right-hand side. If we do something to the right-hand side, we have to do the same thing to the left-hand side. Okay, hopefully that's going to make sense when we have a look at it in a minute. So, let's have a look at one-step equations. Okay, I've got this one here that says solve for P. P plus 2 equals 7. Now, I know some of you are sitting there going, 5, 5, it's 5, P is 5, I've got it already. That's because this one is an easy one step. But that doesn't mean we can't show working. Because with one step equations, I need you to show you're working in a particular way so that you get in the habit. So, but by the time we get to two step and three step and multiple step equations, you have your working down pat. So in case you make a mistake, I can still give you marks. Now, how did you know it was 5? How did you know that P was 5? Well, I'm hoping some of you were sitting there and going, well, something plus 2 is 7. If I take 2 away from 7, I'll find out what the something is. And that's exactly how we do it. So to take things away from the pronumeral, we have to do the opposite operation. I'm trying to get that pronumeral by itself. So I'm trying to cross that out. I'm trying to get rid of that on that side. It's a plus 2. How do I get rid of a plus 2? Well, I subtract 2. Okay. Now, if I subtract 2 from this side and get rid of that plus 2, I learnt in the previous slide what I do to one side, I have to do the same to the other. So if I've subtracted 2 from the left, I have to subtract 2 from the right. That's exactly as your working should write, guys. You show one step at a time, okay, and you have your working going down the page. Equal signs under equal signs. Okay, let's have a look at another example. Okay, this one's another operation. It says B minus 2 equals 7. So if I subtract 2 from something, it gets, it gets me 7. Now, I want to get rid of this subtract 2, so I've just got my B by itself. What's the opposite of subtracting 2? How can I get rid? How can I cancel out a subtract 2? Well, to cancel it out or to get back to 0, I add 2. Okay. If I add 2 to this side, I have to add 2 to the other side. So B would equal 
9. See, equal signs under equal signs, showing all of my working. Okay, this time I have 3p equaling 9. Well, what operation is going on between the 3 and the p? I hope some of you are sitting there going, multiplication. Yes, of course it's multiplication. What's the opposite of multiplying? What's the opposite of multiplying? Well, yep, yeah, you're right, dividing. If I want to get rid of that multiplied by 3, I can only get rid of it by doing the opposite operation. The opposite of multiplying by 3 is dividing by 3, and that will cross that out. If I divide this side by 3, I have to divide my other side by 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3. Again, equal signs under equal signs, showing all my working. Cool, this last one says solve for x, x divided by 5 is 1, how do I find out what x is? Well, what's the opposite of dividing by 5? Okay, the opposite of dividing by 5 is multiplying by 5. If I multiply it by 5, I'll get rid of the 5 there. If I do something to my left hand side, I have to do the same to my right hand side. In cancelling it out, I multiply. So 1 times 5 is 5. Equal signs under equal signs, showing all my working. I really hope you're seeing a trend. Okay, you'll notice that our heading changes. It doesn't say examples one step, it now says examples two step. So I need to make I need you to make sure you've got a different heading, examples two step. And it says solve for p. What do you notice is different about this equation? What do you notice is different? I'm hoping some of you are oops, sorry. I'm hoping some of you are sitting there going, well. I've got more than one thing on my left, and you're right, okay? This time I have two Ps. I've got a 2P and a 3P. Hmm, what can I do here? 2P and 3P. Oh, hold on. In algebra, I learn about like terms. If they have the same pronumeral, that means they're a like term. That means I can group them, doesn't it? Oh, okay. So if I ever see an equation that has pronumerals that are like terms on one side, I must make sure I group them. So 2p plus 3p is 5p equals 10. Now this looks like an equation I saw in my last example. Okay, In my last example, I know that that 5 is being multiplied by p. So if I'm trying to get the pronumeral by itself, because that's the aim of equations, how do I get that pronumeral by itself? Well, what's the opposite of multiplying p by 5? Dividing p by 5, okay, and if I divide p by 5, I would get rid of that, okay. If I get divide this side by 5, I must divide my other side by 5, okay. So p would equal 10 divided by 5 is 2. Quick way to check that I haven't told you so far, okay, I think p is 2. Why don't I try substituting, okay. Oh, that's a good idea. What's 2 P, what, what operation is going on between them? Well, times, okay, isn't it? And I think P is 2, so let's substitute every time I see P for 2. And that's 3 times 2. So 2 times 2 is 4, plus 3 times 2 is 6. So if, if this equals 6, on if that equals 6 and that equals 4, that's saying 4 plus 6. 4 plus 6, yep, is 10 which means I found the correct solution for my pronumeral, okay? So if you wanted to ever check and see if you got your answers correct, that is a perfectly good way to do it. Okay, let's have a look at this one here. Now, I don't have any like terms I can combine. Remember in the first slide when we wrote down, we start with the thing furthest away from the pronumeral. So here's my pronumeral. And we start with the thing furthest away on the side where the pronumeral is. I can't touch anything on the equal side just yet. That, that's not going to really help me. Okay. That 2 is married to the P. That's saying I multiply P by 2 and then I add 2. That's what that's saying. And then I add 2 after I've multiplied it by 2. So the thing furthest away from the pronumeral at the moment is the plus 2. I don't mean physically furthest away, I mean kind of in my number sentence. What comes last? Okay, it's 2 multiplied by p and then I add 2 on top. So the add 2 is the first thing I want to cancel out. Now if I want to cross that out, what's the opposite of adding by 2? Yep, you're right, subtracting by 2. 
if I subtract 2 from this side and I just get rid of it over there, it's a plus 2 so I subtracted it, I have to subtract 2 from my other side. Okay, I can't just leave the other side as it is. If I subtract 2 from this side, I have to subtract 2 from my other side. Okay, so 10 subtract 2 is 8. Now this looks like one of the one-step equations that I saw. P on this line is being multiplied by 2. How do I get rid of a multiplied by 2? Well, I divide by 2, okay? And that would cancel this 2 out. So if I divide this side by 2 and cancel that 2 out, I have to divide the other side by 2. Oh, sorry, I have to divide the other side by 2. Okay, so again, I'm sorry, you would do equal signs under equal signs. I've just run out of room. P would 8 divided by 2 is 4. Okay, you would do equal signs under equal signs. See how they're all there? Okay, I just ran out of room. Now, let's quickly check and see if we're right. Well, what operation's going on between the 2 and the P in the equation? What times? So let's try substituting. 2 times 4 is 8, plus 2 is 10. 10 equals 10. Cool. That means my p equals 4 is the correct solution. Let's have a look at this one. 4b minus 2 equals 14. Now, if you think you know how to do this, press pause for me. Okay? You try solving it and then come back and have a listen to my explanation. If you're a bit stuck, let's go ahead. Okay, right, the thing furthest away from my pronumeral, it's married to the b at the moment. This is saying b multiplied by 4, then I subtract 2. Once I multiply something by 4 that I don't know, I subtract 2, I get 14. So the thing furthest away from my pronumeral is the minus 2. That's the thing that happens last. So that's the first thing I try and take away. Okay, what's the opposite of minusing 2 or subtracting 2? Okay, if I want to cancel that out, I can only do it by the opposite. If I'm on minus 2 and I need to get back to 0, or I need to cancel it out, how do I do that? Well, I add 2. Now, because it's an equation, I have to keep the scales balanced. If I add 2 to this side, what do I have to do to the other side? Yep, that's right, I add 2 to the other side as well. So 4b, oh, sorry, that looks like a 6. Okay, 4b equals 16. Now this looks like a one-step equation I've seen before. The b is being multiplied by 4, and I get 16. So what's the opposite of multiplying by 4? Well, if I want to cancel this 4 out, I have to divide by 4. If I divide by 4 for this side and cancel it out, I have to do exactly the same thing to my other side. 16 divided by 4 is 4. Cool. How can I check to see if I got it right? Well, what operation is going on in my original equation between the 4 and the b? It's times, okay? So, let's try substituting a 4 in over that b and see if we got it right. 4 times 4 is 16, and then I subtract 2, and I get 14. Cool. My answer, therefore, must be correct. Okay, let's have a look at this one. I'm saying I divide x by 5. Okay, I divide x by 5. Then I add 7, and my answer becomes 11. When I divide something I don't know by 5 and then add 7, my answer I get is 11. Okay, so the first thing or the thing furthest away from the pronumeral, which is up there, is the plus 7. That's the first thing I have to get rid of, and I want to cancel it out on that side. How do I cancel out a plus 7? Well, if I, add, if I want to cancel out and add 7, okay, I need to minus 7. Okay, and if I've cancelled it out on that side of minus 7, I have to minus 7 from my other side. Okay, so x divided by 5 equals 4. Now you would do equal signs under equal signs. I've just run out of room, so I'm going to have to unfortunately go over the other side of my page. But I'm going to pretend it's underneath. Now x divided by 5 equals 4. That's saying x divided by 5. Okay, to cancel this 5 out, which is what I want to do, okay, I need, to, um, I need to do that by doing the opposite operation. Okay, to cancel out a divided by 5, I need to multiply by 5. Okay, and that would just give me x by itself. If I multiply that by side by 5 and cancel this guy out, I have to do the same thing to the other side. Okay, so that will give me an answer of x equals 20. Cool, let's check and see if I got my answer right. Okay, let's substitute 20 on top of there. 
20 divided by 5 is 4, plus 7 is 11. Cool, and that's my answer on that side, which means that I've totally got that equation pronumeral correct. Okay, let's have a look at this one. Now this one's a little bit of a tricky one and I put it in there for a reason. It says a plus 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. Now, I know we've been getting rid of the subtractions and the adds first, but there's something really different about this question that I need you to kind of have a bit of a look at. It's saying I take something I don't know, I add 2 to it, and then after that I divide it by 2. So the thing furthest away from the pronumeral in this question isn't the add 2. It's actually the divided by 2 because that's splitting everything that's on the top with what's on the bottom. So the first thing I need to do is get rid of this. So I've just got a plus 2. Now how do I get rid of a divided by 2? Well, what's the opposite of dividing by 2? The opposite of dividing by 2 is multiplying by 2. Okay. So if I multiply this side by 2, I'm going to get rid of that division. But it means I have to multiply the other side by 2. Okay. Negative 1, a plus 2, negative 1 multiplied by 2. I've got a positive and a negative. 1 times 2 is 2. If I've got two different signs, it's going to be a negative. Okay. Now, let's have a look. a plus 2 equals negative 2. Okay. Do not get scared of negatives. You are going to see negatives all the time. I haven't done any direct examples with negatives. It's not at the end of the world. Negatives don't mean you've got the answer wrong. You've probably got the answer right. Stay calm and relaxed. Negatives are okay. So at the moment I've got a plus 2. I'm trying to get the a by itself. How do I get rid of a plus 2? Well, I minus 2. If I minus 2 from that side and get rid of the plus 2, I need to minus 2 on this side. Now that looks weird. I look like I've written the same thing twice. But it's saying it's negative 2 and I get 2 degrees cooler. Well, if it's negative 2 and I jump 2 degrees cooler, it's going to be negative 4. Okay? Now, how can I check to see if I've got this right? Well, I'll substitute. Okay, let's put negative 4 in here. If it's negative 4 degrees and I get 2 degrees warmer, so negative 4 plus 2, uh, that will become negative 2. Negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. So I got my answer correct. I put this question in here because I don't want you to freak out about negative numbers. Stay calm and relaxed. Okay, let's have a look at this one. Again, another negative number. Okay, 3R plus 7 is negative 5. I'm going to go through it a little bit of a quicker pace. Okay, the thing furthest away from my pronumeral is my plus 7. I get rid of a plus 7 by minusing it. If I minus 7 from that side and cancel it out, I need to minus 7 from the other side. Okay, if I'm on negative 5 degrees and it gets 7 degrees cooler, okay, I become on negative 12. Okay, if 3R is equal to negative 12, how do I get R by itself? Well, that's multiplication. The opposite of multiplying is dividing. If I divide this side by 3, I'll cancel that out. If I divide that's the left-hand side by 3, I have to divide the right-hand side by 3. Negative 12 divided by 3. Go 12 divided by 3 is 4. Positive, uh, sorry, negative, positive. My answer is going to be a negative. I would assume that this would be underneath, but my answer becomes negative 4. Okay, how can I check to see if I'm right? Well, let's substitute. 3 times negative 4. 3 times 4 is 12, okay, and it's a negative and a positive, so it's going to be negative 12 degrees, and I get 7 degrees warmer. Yep, that becomes 5. Okay, guys, I know that was a hell of a lot, okay? I know that that was kind of all of equations in one, but hopefully for most of you, that was a bit of a revision.